guess what? Narrowboat Rosetta is for sale. Hello lovely people. Me and Bridget are on another journey of our discovery and our adventure and uh, we've got some new ideas that we're going to be doing including camper vanning but also uh, remote off-grid living further north in the UK. But that's for another time. This video is our walkthrough of our narrowboat Rosetta who currently is for sale. A lot of you know Rosetta. Here she is. I and Bridget love her to bits. She's gorgeous. She's a 62 foot long, six foot 10 inches wide narrowboat, built in a Dutch, Dutch boat style. If you look, her side walls are very straight. Okay, can you see how vertical they are? They taper in a little bit, but nothing quite like a normal narrowboat. Also, you notice as well, the gunnel is a lot narrower as she goes along the side of the boat. When you compare it to other narrow boats, you'll see what I mean. So she's got a swept back design and she is basically built in the design of a Dutch barge. The cabin area is the, my favorite part. And as you can see, it isn't much higher at the rear than the narrow boat next door. A lot of people think that she's going to have trouble under the boats, under, under bridges, etc. But she's actually no higher than the narrow boat next door, which is a good thing because you didn't want to scratch it or have to take it down. So this cabin never folds down. There's no need for it to do that. Okay. Also, she has, most narrow boats have like these things to moor up on the side where ours are on the inside of the narrow boat okay that comes from the Dutch style so yeah she's gorgeous she's got a hatch on the top which we open up when we're cruising and also both side doors open up as well I'll show you inside the narrow boat any minute now but she's pretty easy to get on she has these little foot plates that allow you to climb up so I'll just she's going to be blacked in the next week so she's coming out of the water and she's having a whole survey done and uh, and then she's having a blacking done as well i'm going to check the anoids and i think we might do the rope seal as well on the stern gland um so she's going to be fit for anybody her um, uh, boat safety certificate runs out in just over 12 months from now okay she's double glazed um, she has a short chimney, but also has a longer chimney as well. And uh, on top there, we've got some scaffolding poles because when you're on the river near Peterborough, sometimes it can get a bit high and start to flood over the side. So we stick them down the side to um, stop us from being lifted onto the embankment. Forgive me for being a bit careful here. I'm talking while I'm trying to fall in the water. So yeah, this is the front half of Rosetta. She's got a lovely um, tunnel light on the front. She's got the anchor there, air horn hidden away, storage locker, two bottles of gas in there. And then I've got my 4G uh, internet for mobile communications as well. So let me move that back down the boat. So this is her profile. She's nice and shiny. There's uh, solar panels there, which are brilliant. <laughs> We've been off grid for the last two and a half years, so I can tell you now everything works fine. I'm just gonna climb up onto the narrow boat, onto Rosetta, and just give you an idea what she's like. And this is the hatch. I might as well open that up because I haven't locked it. Just gotta be careful I don't fall off. Try doing this while you're filming. Okay. So I'm gonna keep the video running as much as I can. Just so you get a real idea of what she's like. Uh, 
Okay. So she's metal fronted doors, so you can't kick these in. Security is actually very good on this boat. And there she is. Let me move my coat out of the way. Stick that out there. So where I put the coat, we put cushions on there, and then when we're moored up, we take this flagpole out of there and we put an umbrella, like a picnic table umbrella in there as well. And we plonk ourselves. So this is sort of like our uh, front of the boat, really. This is where we tend to le leisure and sit around next to the water. So it's sort of reverse in a sense. Um, in here, you've got the full wheelhouse, a nice big destroyer wheel with all the controls. So it's got everything to keep you in order. I fitted some USB sockets in here as well. And just around the corner, she's got a cigarette lighter charger as well. So to keep you going. She's got organ keys for all the auxiliaries, nav lights, bilge pump, horn, tunnel light and cabin lights. And then every conceivable navigation book that you would need for the network. Uh, forward and reverse controls, all your pins and uh, everything you need for a mooring upper there. And we've got an extension, uh, extending pole as well. And she's been around, she's got all these different places. You'll have to pause the video to see where she's been, but all these badges show where she has already been on the network. And I can tell you now, she has had no issues with navigating under low bridges. We're actually currently on the middle levels uh, where the railway lines and roads go over and they are the lowest bridges on the network and she's going under them. Okay, so I'll shut this now. So that's what she's like. There's the water expansion tank for the heating system. We've got the um, inverter here from Sterling for your mains electric and that also talks to the pro charger that's sterling as well and um, that charges when you're on main shore line and also the inverter knows when you're on main shore line that it switches off from the battery we've also got an, an amp hours counter and voltage level checker there as well and also the solar charge controller doing its thing. So underneath is the Beta Marine. We've got a Beta Marine 50, Beta Marine 55 horsepower engine. She has two alternators, one 24 volt alternator, which is the one where my foot is, and also a smaller alternator for the 12 volt battery. And then hidden, I don't think you're going to be able to see, but down there, there is also a diesel heating system as well for heating up the radiators and the water. She has a chlorifier, so there's the timer. So if you want to manually or timer switch, if you're on shore hookup to get the water heating up using electricity, immersion heater. You've got your consumer trip switch box there. And in the gray box is the 12 volt system as well. And what else? I think that's pretty covered in everything in here. And then this is the view. Now at the moment, she's quite high up at the front because I've emptied the water tank. So you can imagine the front comes down a few inches to make it visually see better. But a lot of the time we just navigate out the side. So I swing that window, that door around. <clears throat> and I use the side to navigate as well. And likewise, this door on this side opens up as well. And both the rear doors open up as well. That one's locked at the moment. And then, or I look out the top, like so. Navigate out the top. What I haven't showed you is the batteries. So we've got six 
12 volt batteries that are wired up in a, in a, um, a 24 volt system. There's another one over here. And then one more there. So six of those. And then you've got the actual 12 volt battery that's the starter battery as well. These batteries are all brand new. Sealed lead acid. Um, oh, there's the stern gland greaser at the back there as well. Oh, and this is this plate here, that great plate there, is the weed hatch. Should you get anything wrapped around it, which I have had numerous times, one of the worst ones was, one of the worst times we had was a go-kart wheel. Yeah, like a, a little go-kart wheel. So now I'm just gonna unlock the, um, the security door, so I need to press uh, clear. Uh, there we go. So again, this, this door here is a steel door. Even though it's wood on the outside, it's steel all the way through. So again, security is very good on this boat. All right, so the first room we come to is originally the loo toilet. And um, I, me and Bridget used it as a storage room but uh, we've purposed it back to the loo, but it can be a storage room or, or a loo. So I'll just leave, leave a cassette loo there. Okay. And we have lighting at the top and also on the side. The 12 volt system for the lighting is 24 volt, most of it. And then there's a little thing that takes it down to 12 volts for the fridge so you've got a permanent 12 volt reliable supply um, we've got floor lighting down at the bottom all the way through the boat i'll stick these other lights on here so here's the double wardrobe with mirrors on the front okay and then we have the bed which that is the full size of the bed you could make it go wider if you modified it. The storage under the bed, there's no tank, there's no pump out on this boat. Then we have the heating controllers and there's some USB charging points there and also a light switch as well. So really useful in the morning to put the heating on. And uh, we have storage above the bed as well, both there and also here as well. That's the bed area. Again, radiator is running through the bed, uh, that bedroom area and into the hallway here. And then we come to the bathroom. Our bathroom has a full size bath, full size sink, and um, another radiator as well. And we did have our composting loo in front of the radiator there. Well, this is the bathroom. Okay. Hence the reason why she has a large water tank. And next we're coming through is into the kitchen area. We have a shoreline fridge, 12 volt fridge, freezer and gas, but we only use it with 12 volt. You then have the normal sink unit with the window, spice racks, storage below, nice drawer, and then an oven with four hobs, grill and oven. And again, with storage above, spice racks. Then we come to the duck hatch, which has two bolts, because this whole section of the roof actually moves out the way. I won't open it all up. I'll just open it up a bit for you, give you an idea. So the light would flood in through this whole area, but also this whole area here would also fold back completely over to the roof. More radiators. Then our seating area, which doubles into storage and also a bed. So on the bed, this pulls out all the way across, like so. And the cushions you put there to make the bed up. Also, the bed doubles up as storage. So under here, you've got the storage as well. And likewise, for that section there. 
and um, yeah, she's a, a good combination of bed, storage and seating area. And this is where we'd normally have our dinner, tea. We'd have a table that we put up just here. And I'll show that in a minute. Again, lots of windows, double glazed. The TV, if you were to have one, you'd put it on there. And then we've got good storage again on the right and left of the boat. Again, LED lighting throughout the boat. That's actually switched off at the boat at the moment. And also, there's a nice, um, it says, fold down desk, bureau for working with your laptop, etc. That has even got a light in it with a little proximity switch that switches on. Moving up to the front of the boat, we have our dining table stored away. All the boat has roller blinds throughout the whole boat. Which is nice. And we've got some traditional oil filled lamps as well. On that side and also over here as well. More plug sockets, and then we have our Morso grill stove, multi fuel, which heats the boat up immensely. So, you will need the windows open not all the time, but sometimes. And then, underneath here, this is where I put the filter system in. A lot of cobwebs under there. So, you've got your water pump, accumulator, and two filters, and other stuff that I just store under there. And there's a water, water filter and ceramic filter as well, so it removes the chlorine. And then, oh, this door's locked, so I'll have to come back to you on that. Okay, so the doors completely open up. Once there was a, um, a piano on this boat originally, it gives you access to the storage locker, which you've got two gas bottles, all your oils, anything that goes with the boat, basically, some extra weight, even a chimney sweeping brush. So it's a good size storage. And then you've got the water tank, which is the gray part with the inspection plate there. And that tank runs all the way underneath that blue section, right to the front of the boat. Yeah. You can have the cobwebs for free. <laughs> There's no end of them. Cobs, that's the sign of a good boat. And there's the 4G pole that goes with that. Yeah, I think that's it really. Oh, you've got your air horn, you've got ladders, you can climb out the side here. Full anchor to meet both safety certificate. There's an aerial pole there, should you wish. Um, and again, life, life saver down there as well. So yeah, so that is it. That is our narrowboat Rosetta. So we are going to miss her. And the reason why we're selling her is, as you probably know, a lot happened in the last year and a half. We, my mother passed away just during a, sh uh, a short period of illness. Um, also, my uh, Bridget's brother passed away as well in the, last, in the last year as well. So we've had a real rethink of what we want to do. And I'm not saying that we don't want a narrow boat. We certainly will, and we most likely will revisit narrow boating again in the future. Some of you might not know, I, I come from a farming background, so I've always wanted to be connect, uh, more in touch with nature and being off grid and stuff like that. And um, part of that process is wanting to get back to the land, um, not as full blown farms, but like homestead. So that's the plan. We will be heading up north, um, on a new adventure we've got we're selling our current camper van which is the early bay um, vw t2 and we've bought a t4 coachy vw which will be traveling around the uk once covid all settles down and and everything's um, a bit more normal if there is such a word after all of this so yeah so thank you very much for watching this video if you'd like to find out how, how much she is, then there'll be a link in the description below if you want to purchase her. But, but also I'll be using this video to send to people who have already inquired. 
uh, who fancy a walk through virtually first all right so um thanks for watching stay tuned i'm going to try and get all the other videos that i've still got that i haven't uploaded onto the page and hopefully we'll start doing the page again so there she is so we'll catch you again on the other side take care see you later